Igor, I really need your help. The faucet is broken, exclaimed Auntie Anne. Of course, Auntie Anne. Let me come over tomorrow morning. Will 7 o'clock work for you? I have everything scheduled, replied Igor, eager to assist. Absolutely, that works for me. Auntie Anne replied without hesitation. When Natalia Sergeyevna gained a son-in-law, the entire building celebrated. Igor, their trusted and efficient plumber, always strived for perfection in his work, and this time was no different. A neighbor from the 23rd apartment encountered a plumbing issue. Without a second thought, she dialed Igor's number and was relieved that he would be there the next morning to provide emergency assistance. Hello, Aunt Anne, show me where the problem is. Igor addressed his mother-in-law's neighbor. Right this way, it's in the bathroom. This is the faucet. The woman led Igor to the broken fixture. Despite the early hour, the apartment already smelled of freshly baked goods. Igor swiftly fixed the faucet, glancing at his watch with some free time remaining. Well, please have a seat and join me for breakfast. You probably haven't had time. The woman gratefully offered him some pies. Yes, I do have a few minutes to spare. I have to be in your neighborhood by 9 o'clock. Igor responded. Please, take a break. Enjoy some more pies. You don't indulge in such treats often. You're so thin. The woman insisted, expressing her appreciation. No, thank you. Dasha cooks very well. Igor replied, even surprising himself. In reality, Dasha didn't bake any delicacies for him. Their meals were simple and modest due to their financial constraints. While Igor worked hard and earned a good income as a plumber, his wife justified their frugality by claiming there was a lack of money. As he finished his tea, Igor realized that, in their four years of marriage, he had forgotten about himself. Orders for his plumbing services flooded in day and night, on weekends and weekdays. Yet he denied himself even the smallest pleasures. He desired to go out with his friends to the bar, but his wife always forbade it, claiming there was no money. Such instances had become too common. It made Igor nostalgic, longing for a time when he could prioritize his own happiness as well. He had diligently saved money in anticipation of their wedding and had purchased an apartment, small yet rather decent. The funds had covered all their expenses. But suddenly, Dasha found herself short on cash, despite their refrigerator always being well stocked. I'll prepare some pies for you to eat during the day. Honestly, I feel for you. This isn't the first time you've come to me, and you're always so serious and responsible. You're a dependable guy. The folks in the building feel sorry for you and sympathize with your situation. You're such a good young man, remarked their neighbor, the mother-in-law's friend. But Fyodorovna's granddaughter is such a wonderful girl. It's a shame you didn't meet her earlier, interjected Aunt Anya unexpectedly. Igor was puzzled by the last comment. Well, I'm married, you know. How can I go around meeting granddaughters now? What would my wife think? He quipped. You'd better talk to her soon. It's painful to watch all of this, advised the neighbor. So, can we please get to the point? What's all this about? Igor asked, his irritation barely concealed. I apologize if I'm being forward, but I can't keep it in any longer. If you don't want to see me or even greet me after this, that's your choice? but I can't hold back any longer. Aunt Anya confessed. Aunt Anya, what's going on? Please tell me, I'm getting concerned. Do you know how your mother-in-law used to live? Aunt Anya inquired. I haven't really inquired about that. Why do you ask? But we're all connected here. It's right in front of our eyes. You might not want to know, but you'll eventually find out everything. She married a military man, Dasha's father, when she was young. They got this apartment, the very one we're in, and then we met. That's the whole story. As soon as my husband left on his military assignments, she would invite guests over. So many people came, I couldn't even count. Then there was a bitter divorce. He wanted his daughter so badly. Who would give a military man custody with his constant travels? He left the apartment and moved away. Whenever he returned, he came back in tears. Natasha, your mother-in-law, had brainwashed the girl when she was just four years old, feeding her all sorts of notions. She would say things like, I don't love you, and you used to hurt me and my mom, and I hate you. 
She said so many things, even though he was a good man, just not as wealthy as the man your darling daughter is currently seeing. She had a gift for persuasion. She could put anything into Dasha's head, and Dasha believed her. I think she still does. I'm completely confused, Igor said, trying to make sense of the situation. Dasha said her father abandoned them. Well, that's what her mother told her. Igor explained. It seems that Natasha had a brief relationship, then found someone else. She even shouted from the window that she found a better and richer man. Igor attempted to steer the conversation away from this difficult topic. Well, that's in the past, he said. It is indeed in the past, Aunt Anya interjected. But then it happened three more times. Each time, the next man was richer than the previous one. And now, despite being under 50, she doesn't let her daughter live her own life. She even seems intent on ruining your future. Igor was at a loss for words. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. Do you know what your fiancé is doing? Aunt Anya continued. She listens to her mother. And that's the biggest mistake. We overheard them talking in the hallway, discussing how they should marry someone wealthy and live a life of luxury. They believe your plumbing job isn't worth much. Oh, and don't forget about me. I'm getting older, and Natalia has never even tried to work and has no plans to start. Igor felt anger welling up inside him. His nostrils flared, and he clenched his fists. He slammed his hand down on the table, the pie crashing down with force. What did you just say? He asked, his voice filled with disbelief. Well, I haven't said anything yet. Aunt Anya hesitated. But your mother-in-law is temporarily lending their apartment to her daughter and leaving herself. Your hot-headed fiancé is hosting a guest there, and it seems quite serious. Igor couldn't comprehend what he was hearing. What do you mean, a guest? Who are you talking about? He exclaimed, shocked by the revelation. I've seen four different people this year, maybe even more. I'm not entirely sure, Aunt Anya replied. This can't be happening. Igor muttered in disbelief. How did we end up in this situation? We're wondering the same thing, Aunt Anya sighed. But for now, focus on yourselves and avoid any more complications, or you might end up with a child sooner than you think. She's the one searching for a wealthy man. Well, let her keep searching. Let her dig. Let her dig in the mess. The young man muttered to himself. Igor had the keys to his mother-in-law's vacant apartment, as she had gone to the countryside for a week, and he had them on him. He pulled out one key and reminisced. Two years ago, his beloved mother-in-law had gone to her sister's village for a week and had given him the key so he could water the flowers, but somehow they had forgotten about it. Annoyed, Igor descended to the ground floor and entered his mother-in-law's apartment. She took her morning walks in the park, a habit she had maintained for many years which had allowed her to make numerous acquaintances. Time was limited, but the skilled plumber easily managed to create a blockage in the toilet. He placed it there, fastened it, and it was done. Additionally, he ensured that the drains from all nine floors were connected to his mother-in-law's apartment. What more could you desire? Igor thought to himself. Before leaving, he rummaged through his suitcase and found some metal shavings. With a delicate flick of his hand, he inserted them deeply into the lock, pushing them in with the key, and then departed through the entrance. Digging in the mess now, Igor exclaimed while on the road, tossing the key out of the car window. After wrapping up his endeavors, Igor returned home and discovered his wife in a state of anxiety. My mom has, she couldn't finish her sentence. Your mom has four prosperous men waiting for you, they want your services. Hurry or you'll be late, her husband said in a strangely calm tone. Dasha rushed to leave, but there was no other option. She packed her belongings and hailed a cab. Go, go, both you and your mother. Coat live there. It suits you. Igor dismissed her with those words. A few days later, Aunt Anya called Igor. Do you know the stench over here? You can't even fathom how quickly we passed by Dasha's apartment. You can't even comprehend how we all laughed when Natasha, Dasha, and the locksmith who opened the door stumbled out. We nearly choked, but we chose to stay and watch the entire show. I don't understand what you mean, Igor replied, 
forcefully pressing his fist against his knee to stifle his laughter, and several times with a gap of two or three days in between. Aunt Anya sent the same message. It still stinks. Those two words brought immense satisfaction to Igor. Well, they acted like garbage, so they can live in garbage.